legends in music. two unfamiliar men. They approached him unhurriedly. And one of them with a thick silvery beard was riding a horse, while the other, a middle-aged man, was leading his horse by the bridle. Well-being and goodness to your whole family, Jigit, the Oxacol said in a sonorous, thick voice. Thank you, and let the Almighty give you strength and longevity, Boget answered. We got off the road, the Oxacol continued, and we couldn't help but turn here because of your dumbra and your singing. It was so touching. Thank you. You are so kind, travelers. Your words have pleased my heart, he answered, bowing to the Jigit. My name is Boget. I am Kuishi Dairabai, the Oxacol continued, and my hearing immediately caught the sweet sound of your dumbra. Come along and take a rest from the road, Boget said, pointing to a felt blanket spread under a long, branchy tree. Only now the guests saw that a girl of six or seven year old was sitting on it. The girl smiled and bowed her little head with the neatly braided black braids as a sign of respect. Child, the Kuishi said, turning to the girl who held the Dumbra in her hands. You are so sweet and bright as the dawn. Yes, this is my daughter, Adia, Boget said proudly. Sometimes we come here with her and relax in the shadow of this wonderful tree. Yes, yes, it's good here, the Kuishi said. It's fresh and cool. You could spend long hours here admiring nature. Give us joy, Jigit. Your performance is great and you are a skillful musician. And you, Boget, gave this gift. Let me enjoy your performance, and I will travel on further. Boget then looked at his daughter, and the girl touched the strings of her dumbra. In disbelief, the men exchanged glances among themselves. But then they heard the surprisingly beautiful melody. The dumbra began to sing. It was as if thousands of streams were bubbling, and the bells of the steppe were iridescent. The guests listened to it, and they could not believe either their eyes or their ears that this little girl could play so skillfully on the Dumbra. Rabbi exclaimed. I've seen a lot of things on this earth, but I haven't seen anything like this. This is like a dream before my eyes. For a long time, the Kuishi and his friend admired and praised Adia's skills. It was such a rare thing to see a girl who could play so well on the Dumbra. And this girl, in fact quite a child, could play better than many Dumbra players in the world. Imperceptibly, time flew by. Warmly and touchingly, the travelers said goodbye to Boget and to his amazing little daughter. The Kuishi Dairabai was riding and smiling, thinking about something. And then he turned to his faithful friend and said, You know, Asin, my soul right now is singing. I feel like a swift golden eagle soaring high in the sky. This feeling of joy and delight fills me. That's very good, Yasin said calmly. When will we finally come home? The Kuishi exclaimed with fervor. What's wrong with you? Yasin said, looking at his friend in surprise. 
Don't you recognize these places at all? Behind this same hill will be our Aul. Ah, the Kuishi said, grinning. But I didn't notice. I'm so impatient to take my Dumbra. I will compose a Kui about this girl and let the people know all about her. The Kuishi Dairabai looked admiringly at the girl as her tiny, childish, puffy hands flew up on the Dumbra's neck. It was amazing to him to see that a little girl, quite a child actually, could play so skillfully on the Dumbra. Her name was Adia, which means gift, and indeed the Almighty was generous, awarding her with such a talent. Adia played with ease, and her face was serious and focused. This is true only for true musicians. For many long years of life, Dairabai was taught to recognize among great heaps of all sorts of musicians, who, like flocks of crows, would come to different celebrations, real artistic pearls. And in this girl, he immediately saw a divine gift. When the girl put aside the Dumbra, he put his hands on his chest and bowed and said, I bow my head to you, little musician. My beard has grayed for a long time, and I've seen a lot of things on this earth. Sometimes people say that I can see the future. And so I know that for certain people just like me, we will bow our heads in admiration of you. And you will be famous far beyond our valley. The girl's cheeks blushed because of such warm words of the venerable Kuishi. And Adia laughed loudly, covering her face with her sleeve. Here, take this, Dairabai said, and he took a Dombra out of his traveling felt bag. I want you to accept a gift from me, my Dombra. Do not look, Adia. That is not as elegant as all female Dombras, and her size doesn't suit you at all. This Dombra is special. The master made it for me from a 100-year-old Tian Shan fir tree, which grew on top of a huge mountain. And its sound is mesmerizing, and it brings good luck. Thank you, grandfather, Adia said. Take it, it will be useful for you, continued the Kuishi. Just promise to me that you will sometimes play on it. Yes, the girl said, I promise. After all, if the Doombra is not played, then it will slowly die. No, no, Adia exclaimed, picking up the Doombra. I'll play on it, I promise you. Dairabai laughed and nodded his head. The years flew by, but the hands of the glorified Kuishi Dairabai were still strong, and his hearing thin and sharp. Many wished to see him as an honored guest at their celebrations, because his Kuis caressed the ears with their melodiousness and sophistication. Once he accepted the invitation of a Kuishi and went to a large, magnificent celebration. How many guests have come to this holiday? Everywhere was singing and dozens of all kinds of musical instruments merged into one chorus, filling the Aul with rhythmic melodies. Famous batirs competed in dexterity and strength. The brave wrestlers with their turns, jerks and hooks threw each other to the ground. It was noisy and fun in the village. From early morning, the Jigits jumped on their stallions, and then they, at full gallop with their horses, picked up coins wrapped in scraps of cloth. 
they fought on their horses, and dropping their opponents from the saddle, they fired from a bow a metal disc suspended on a thin rope. The girls flaunted in bright outfits, ringing and sparkling with their silver ornaments. Dairabai walked among the yurts, and everywhere he was seated for a dastarhan and treated with meat and sweets. The day ended with a performance from the Akuns, who in verse form competed in songs. And only with the sunset over the horizon, all the competition stopped. But as soon as the dawn gilded the tops of the snowy mountains, the holiday started again, bubbling like water in a hot cauldron. One day they decided to arrange a contest for the Kuishis. Many frenzied jigits and gray oxacals showed their skills. Only the best of them continued the contest further. Dairabai sat in the place of honor and listened to the game of the three best kuishis who defended their championship. He listened attentively to the melodies of the kuis with his thin ears, catching the slightest inaccuracies or flaws in the playing of the dumbra. To Dairabai's surprise, there was a very young girl among the three competing, a real beauty. Her rivals were young, arrogant jagits and mature men with an open and affable face. When the girl took her dumbra, decorated with feathers and ribbons, and struck the vain strings, then Dairabai flinched. Only little Adia could play like this. He was fascinated by her skill and understood how more deeply and more precisely she began to understand the music, to live and dissolve in it. After a short break, they again sat down on the felt carpet and took the dumbra in their hands. Suddenly there was a cry of despair. Adia threw up her hands and, screaming, slowly looked around in confusion at all the people present. Everyone fell silent and stared at the girl. Only now everyone could see that in her hands she was holding a broken dumbra. The elegant neck was brutally broken by someone's envious hands. The incredible pain pierced Adia's heart. She thought she was flying into some deep abyss, and she had no way to stop this terrible fall. She peered at the faces of the people, trying to find her abuser. No face betrayed itself. In one eyes, the girl saw pity, and in the other, despair, and in a third, indifference. And not a single eye burned with spiteful joy. Cunning opponent did not betray himself. Suddenly, Adia's eyes, with tears frozen in them, settled on Dairabai's face. She recognized him. Illumination came like a flash of lightning. She jumped up and rushed to the nearby yurt. After a moment, she sat down again in her former place. All could see in her hands a rough man's dumbra. The people rustled and there was a rumble. What is this? Why? Could she play on this dumbra? After all, it was made for man's strong hands. The Jagit played vigorously, strongly on his dumbra, and like sharp horses in the hands of a strong rider, was accurate and impetus. Admiring glances rushed at him, and he knew that victory would soon follow. As soon as his dombra ceased to play, the second Kuishi started to play, easily and freely like the steppe wind, walking along the plains. His music gave serenity and peace. Now admiring glances rushed to him. Finally, it was Adia's turn. Everyone was silent and waiting for her to play. She touched the hard, thick strings with her fingers, and they roared dully. People shook their heads. They were right. 
she could not play on this Dombra. But the strings in fact obeyed her, and the Dombra screamed incredibly, slowly and tenderly. The penetrating melody enveloped and enchanted like intoxicating aroma, like flowering poppies. And now the people did not have any doubts that there was not any equal to this amazing young girl, Kuishi. When she finished playing, she looked up at Dairabai, and his face glowed with pride and happiness. Dairabai Yernazar Uli is a composer Kuishi, a classic Kazakh instrumental music. He occupies a special place in the musical culture of the land. In his work, the influence of the traditions of Tatimbiet school is great. He has his own peculiar performing style. His kuis differ in melody and carry themselves in a whole gamut of human feelings, love, tenderness, kindness, and compassion. <laughs> ¶¶ 